So when we started looking at it, there's a couple of real fundamental problems with hedging fuel. Uh, it's a business we don't know. So you buy a hedge, and there's a couple of fundamental ways you buy a hedge. You buy a, a spread around the, do uh, the thing. So if it's, a, if it's a, a $50 barrel of oil, you can buy a hedge that says, we'll pay you if it goes over 60, but if it goes below 40, you've got to pay us. And so most guys would put that type of hedge on, right? Um, and I, you know, I, when we were started thinking about it, and you look at what is the reason you hedge, you know, they, you hedge because you're supposedly managing your revenues and matching expenses and, and fuel and the like. But the problem is that uh, oil is, is was so volatile in the last 10 years, 12 years, uh, particularly in 08. Uh, if you graph the price of oil, it went from, uh, in the space of a year and a half, it went from $50 a barrel up to 147 And at the time, Goldman Sachs, their analyst was saying oil was going to $200 a barrel. So what happened to you if you bought a hedge along that way, or hedges? If you're United Airlines, they bought hedges at $125, $130 cuz it's going to 200. If it goes to 200, they'll be out of business cuz you can't take the fares up at the same pace. But the problem is oil hit 147, then it fell like a stone. And it was at $35 a barrel 8 months later. So what happened to United on the way down on that hedge? They had to just, they're paying money out like crazy because they went below that 40 bucks. And this is a cash and carry business. There's no credit in this. So you their balance sheet is just getting consumed. Southwest did uh, refinancing on airplanes at 15% because they're a big hedge, hedge company. So we quit it in 07 and we didn't have any of those problems. Plus we killed it when oil fell and we didn't have any uh, overhead. In the past year you've heard of Delta's taking a couple billion dollars of losses, Southwest has, um, because they bought these hedges and when oil in what, early 14 was at $100 a barrel or something like that and they're hedging it at, at that and starts coming down, I mean, they just got to pay up. So it's been good for us. We, furthermore, if you buy an oil uh, hedges, you're speculating. There's no transparency. You don't know what's inside them. You don't know what it costs to put that on. Furthermore, in the U.S., you can't get a pure hedge. You can't buy a Jet A uh, hedge. You have to buy a heating oil, or uh, you, know, you have crack spreads and all kinds of technical things that go on. So we're just fine with that. If oil goes up strongly, guess what we do? We pull our capacity back. We stop offering uh, seats at prices that don't support that price of oil. And when oil falls, guess what I do on the other side? I start expanding because I've got better margins. We are now running at a 30% operating margin, which is unheard of in the business. So uh, no, I don't hedge and we don't want to hedge. Last but not least, it is the most miserable accounting exercise you've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know if you've gotten into hedge accounting or all that stuff. The, PCAOB and the uh, accountants sit around thinking up stuff that, unbelievable. I, I, nothing personal, but some of you guys going into professional accounting, I used to do that, I might add. Um, it's a tough world out there with the PCAOB on top of you. So, um, um, but we, we still need you. <laughs> we still need you.